professional film critic Sean Patrick, and this is My Life as a Critic. On this show, I look back on my work as a writer, as a film critic, and uh, try and look at things from a new, older, more mature perspective and kind of give the movie a second chance. Uh, maybe sometimes it doesn't need it, like uh, last time I just watched v-, v for Vendetta, and it's just as good as I remember it. Or uh, Greenberg is a movie that I loved and, you know, it's just as good as I remember it. A lot of movies are just as bad as I remember them, uh, you know. The movies don't change, but I'm wondering, Just this is kind of an experiment to see how much my mindset has changed and how much I can be critical of myself and the way I write and the way I look at movies and how much that has changed over the past nearly 20 years now as a either as an amateur online critic in the last several years as a professional accredited on-air film critic. Uh, I'm just interested in in the way that uh, perspectives change over time, the way, you know, something that is a tangible as a film doesn't really change, but you as a person might see things a little bit differently. You know, like I learned from the Greenberg episode that I'm a less angry person today than I was you know, several years ago. Although I, although I learned in a re- subsequent review after that that I was still, at the time, I was still capable and in touch with my emotions to the point where I was able to, you know, I like, I could cry at a movie. You know, I'm, I'm capable of that. And I've always been capable of that. And I'm no more capable of that now than I was then. But I think I'm, I'm a little bit nicer and a little bit more mature. I have a little bit more perspective and uh, maybe even a little more tolerance for things than I did as a younger man. And I think the movie we're going to talk about today <laughs> being as, uh, inconsequential and forgettable as it as I think it was uh, should be an interesting experiment because I, I again we pick these things I, I pick these things at random we I don't know who we would be <laughs> it's just me doing this uh, <laughs> I think I said we in the last one too but anyway uh, <laughs> I, I pick these things at random and I picked this movie at random and I, I was looking just briefly just clicked on the review to pull it up in front of me so I could read it to you obviously and I caught the glimpse of I caught a glimpse of the first couple of sentences and the and the headline that my editor gave it and I'm like oh man <laughs> I, I I did something here that uh probably this movie didn't deserve uh the movie is called Leap Year and you probably don't remember it it wasn't a big hit but uh Amy Adams uh in between being kind of a buzzy it girl to being the movie star she is today uh, was kind of dipping her toe in that romantic comedy uh, uh, pool for just a little bit. And uh, she made this movie with Matthew Good. It was like 2009, uh, several years ago, in between, like I said, the bigger movies that she's now made, the, the, you know, the kind of movie that kind of made her uh, big. Uh, and then, you know, like Catch Me If You Can or, or the indie films that she did before that that uh, is escaping me now. But... Uh, then, of course, she kind of tried to become a movie star like this, you know, kind of a typical straightforward movie star before she actually became a respected actress in movies like The Master and uh, the movies that she's been subsequently nominated for Oscars for, like American Hustle. But <laughs> just the headline of this review, I'll just read you the headline right now before I actually read you the full review. Uh, it, it, this is, again, we're talking about, we're talking about just this lighthearted Irish romantic comedy. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I I brought something more to this than probably it needed at the time or that it, that this film was capable of achieving uh, being, you know, just a, a, like I said, a romantic trifle. Liberated Amy Adams gets less liberated in leap year. And the opening paragraph is about the women's liberation movement. And oh, man, oh. It's not a bad thing to overthink about movies, I don't think. I think uh, any time you spend thinking about a movie is probably a good thing. Uh, I I know there's a lot of people who say, I don't want to go to the movies to think. When do you think? (laughs) When is it that you spend any time thinking about something? I'm curious. You don't think when you're watching the movies. But (laughs) I'll read you the review. This uh, This could be interesting. This could be embarrassing for me. Uh, if I if I really I may have done just something horrible to this film. <laughs> the women's liberation movement in the universe of film consists of empowering women economically. They all get fabulous jobs in fashion or real estate or owning uncommonly successful restaurants. Liberation stops, however, once they found a man 
such as the case of the new romantic comedy Leap Year, starring the plucky Amy Adams. Adams stars in, new Year, in Leap Year as uh, Anna, whose job is setting up apartments for sale. She doesn't sell the apartments, she merely dresses them for sale and makes fabulous amounts of money doing it. In a rare twist, Anna's already met a man, Jeremy, who uh, shares her love of status symbols in just the right apartment. Anna and Jeremy have been together for four years, and just before he leaves on a business trip to Ireland, Anna gets it in her head that he is finally going to propose to her. She's so convinced that she and a friend actually practice being surprised when he asks. No surprise to anyone who's seen the film's trailer, Jeremy doesn't ask, and Anna is briefly devastated. After Jeremy's plan is hatched, Anna will fly to Ireland just in time for Leap Day, February 29th, a day in which, uh, in the Irish tradition, a woman, uh, when a woman can uh, ask a man to marry her. Now, the liberated woman of today might ask why a holiday is needed for a wo woman to ask a man to marry her. The makers of Leap Year, ladies, are unconcerned with such questions. The Leap Day thing is merely a device to propel Anna on a madcap dash to Dublin. First, her plane is diverted to Scotland. Then she gets stranded in an Irish village called Dingle, where she seeks a ride from one of the locals. The only driver available is also the... The local pub and hotelier, Declan, played by Matthew Good. Surprise, surprise, Anna and Declan immediately choose to dislike each other. She's a shrewish, entitled bitch, and he's the easygoing, handsome charmer with a secret reason for not trusting women. If your eyes weren't rolling through the back of your head as you read that, you have more self-control than I. So off they go on a trip across the Irish countryside, arguing and, uh-oh, falling in love with all the requisite dopey rom-com roadblocks checked off, like shopping, like a shopping list at a cliché outlet. No surprise to learn the script comes from the makers of Maid of Honor and Josie and the Pussycats. We all know how this will end. Anyone who's seen the trailer for Leap Year knows how it will end. It's a romantic comedy, and experience tells us that it is the journey and not the destination when it comes to modern romantic comedy. Sadly, the journey in Leap Year is mostly tedious. I say mostly tedious because along the way, though all the predictable beats are there, somehow a few grace notes sneak in. A script by Polish Oscar winner Simon Beaufoy likely brought, likely brought the scene where Anna and Declan clash at a wedding and then share a romantic walk in Dublin before she meets up with Jeremy. These few good scenes, however, cannot make up for the inept series of cliches that precede them. Add th to that the anti-feminist vibe of the whole thing. In the end, after all the predictable crap plays out, Anna throws everything away. The job she loved, the things she worked hard for, just so that she can uh, live the life of a doting wife. Yes, she's in love, but why does that require her to give up all that she was? Leap Year is yet another movie that affirms that all that really matters to women is getting married and adapting her life to the traditional role of a wife set forth by years of oppression. Choosing to be a wife and mother is as, feminist, is as feminist as getting into the rat race, but Anna giving up herself to adapt to what is expected of her is as anti-feminist a message as any movie of the past decades. I realize that I am not supposed to care. I get that the filmmakers don't want to talk about this, but the ignorance of these facts is a plague that infects far too many modern so-called romances. Leap Year is just the latest symptom of said plague. So... Lots of confusing stuff in that review. Uh, I think I screwed up the, the point of the thing, which is that once Jeremy says he's n not going to ask Anna to marry him, she goes to Ireland with the intent of asking him on Leap Day. That's the whole propellant of the plot. But I screwed up that whole thing, saying it was his plan or, what, uh, yeah, the hatching of the plan, something in there. I screwed that up badly. So <laughs> my bad on that one. Uh, the feminist thing is... I mean, I could I could apply that to any number of different you know movies. Why I chose to lay that on this film, I don't know. I must have been in a mood that day. <laughs> I'm not wrong, really. I mean, when you think about it, I mean, if in the end uh, the the character that Amy Adams is that she gives up everything that she is so she can live in Ireland and and do what he does as opposed to what she was doing, uh, I mean. That, that is a, something of an anti-feminist message. I'm probably being a little too angry about it, considering that it is a, a romantic comedy that doesn't really have much, many goals beyond looking pretty and telling a few jokes. But uh, I'm not necessarily wrong. I mean, you can n look at a number of romantic comedies over the years where you know successful women give up their lives as successful women so they can be with less successful men. I mean, there are, are a few examples of that out there in modern romantic comedy, or at least in the past decade, it's gotten better, you know, because we see fewer and fewer cliched, truly cliched romantic comedies uh, outside of the, the horrendous work of uh, 
Gary Marshall. We don't see too many of these, uh, the classically cliched romantic comedies that we did from like 2000 to 2011, 2012. There were so many of these awful comedies that just replayed the same beats over and over again. Uh, You know, interrupted weddings or uh, women who keep falling down and tripping over themselves and embarrassing themselves in front of the man that they hope to uh, fall in love with. Uh, Just utterly stupid, idiotic cliches that just get so tiresome over years and years and repetition. And Hollywood just loves, loves a formula. And so they kept making movies like Leap Year over and over and over again for well over a decade. Uh, So I'm I'm not necessarily wrong. I'm just probably, you know, reading this review and kind of knowing what this movie is from my memory, it sounds like I'm, you know, swatting a fly with a bazooka. (laughs) So let's. Uh, I'll watch the movie now, and we'll talk more about this, and we'll see if my uh, anti-feminist uh, <laughs> idea of what this film is holds up. Well, this was unexpected. I I hate this movie so much that I couldn't actually force myself to sit through more than thirty three minutes of it. Now I've talked before on the show about you know how I'm a less angry person than I used to be. I was quite proud of the fact that I'm a less angry person than I used to be, but somehow this movie hit me in such a way tonight that I just, I couldn't control it. It filled me with such rage and such just sheer unbridled annoyance that I couldn't control myself. I was banging my head against the keyboard just, I, I was so angry at these characters and just despised them so much that I couldn't, I, I, I lost control. Uh, this is the, I mean, I don't remember hating this movie as much as I hate it right now. I mean, you can tell from the review that I wrote that, that I didn't, I was kind of, I found things to like about it, you know, and I, I, there's no real anger in the review. There's, there's a, you know, me making poli- trying to score some kind of weird political point by turning the film into a metaphor for women in movies. But I, I wasn't angry at the movie, but watching it now, six, seven years out, seven years, six years after it came out, I hate this movie. These characters are some of the worst characters I've ever had the unpleasant time to spend with. Amy Adams' character is, I mean, she's just, she's a horrible human being. She's just one of these people who only exist in movies. And yes, of course, throughout the course of this film, she's supposedly she's going to have an epiphany and change and become a better person and stop being so shallow, self-involved, and and just awful. Uh, but 30, but... It takes a long, it's going to apparently take a very long time to get to a point where she's actual, where she resembles an actual human being. Because by 33 minutes into the film, she is just insufferable. And you really just, if you, if you just watch, she's obnoxiously terrible. She's obnoxiously self involved. But the film around her, it encourages it. I mean, the film around her has to just lower every other character in the movie down to be as terrible as her. So you have Matthew Good, who's just a jerk, just to be a jerk throughout the movie. I mean, he, the first thing he does is is basically tell her that, uh, no, I won't drive you to Dublin. And he plays a stupid, mean-spirited prank on her. I mean, imagine just being somebody who's lost in a town you've never been to, in a country you don't recognize, you're completely out of your depth, and then everybody decides to be a jerk to you. How would that make you feel? Is that, uh, is that really something you want to experience in a fun, lighthearted, romantic comedy? Oh, so he's a jerk. She's a, just an insufferable bitch. She's just completely self-involved, shallow. And the movie is is just as shallow as she is because all the gags are just. I mean, she tries to plug in her phone and she manages to break everything in her in her room at this uh, hotel that Matthew Good owns. Uh, the she wears she's complete she's a 
supposedly a smart, intelligent, working woman, yet she is completely unprepared. She she apparently has she's never heard of casual clothing in her life because she wears five inch heels wherever she goes, including when she gets dropped off on a beach. Because and and, and it's not because she's an idiot, folks. This, this isn't because she's an idiot. It's because the director wanted one shot, just one shot of her expensive heels dug into the beach, just sunk into the beach. Just to show that apparently she's an idiot who doesn't have any kind of sense of, I might need casual clothes when I travel. Oh my god. I mean, (laughs) and just it hits every silly, stupid cliche. Once they get in the car and they start arguing with each other and and they really come to really hate each other, of course, yes, eventually they're going to start loving each other after hating each other for so long. But along the way, they're just the dumb roadblocks that get put in front of them. I mean, at one point, uh, they, they're arguing and she throws his cassette tape of bad music out of the car, so he stops the car to go get it, and then they find that there are cows that are blocking their way. So what does she do? What does she do? She tries to talk to the cows. Yes, she talks to the cows because she's such an idiot character that they stop to have her talk to the cows. Eventually, she starts shooing them away and she clears the way. But what, of course, is going to happen once the cows are out of the way? Bear in mind, she's still wearing those heels. Yes, of course, she's going to step in cow poop because that's hilarious, right? Her stepping in cow poop. And then, of course, what happens next? She accidentally destroys the car. So now they have to walk. And then a group of guys in a van come by. And they steal her luggage because she's thinking about getting in their van. And he tells her not to. Don't do it. Because apparently he just assumes that everybody's going to be a thief along the side of an empty road in Ireland. Oh, I hate this movie so much. Like I said, 33 minutes in. That's all I that's I can't critique it any further because I've only made it through 33 minutes of this horrendous film. This moronic, mean-spirited, shallow, stupid movie which has made me look really dumb on this show, frankly, cuz here I was talking about what a better person I am. Is it I mean, I, it's still fair to say I'm a better person, right? A more mature person. I just <laughs> I didn't realize I still had this well of anger within me. I thought I reserved this just for, like, traffic. Like, <laughs> like I only reserve this kind of bile for road rage. Not for movies anymore. I mean, maybe Movie 43 might have gotten this kind of... <laughs> that was more sadness than anything, I guess, my reaction to that film. I was just kind of just sad for all humanity, but... This movie just hit a vein of anger I didn't even remember I had. I've been so kind of peaceful and serene and you know, still able to tell you that I think a movie isn't any good, but not get angry about it. You know, just kind of accept it. But this movie, it just hit this spot in my mind that just, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't stand it. Like I said, at 33 minutes, I said, forget it, I'm done. I'm tapping out. I can't watch this thing again. Uh, I can't watch any more of this. And I really don't remember this movie being that bad. I saw it in theaters in 2010 and managed to get through the whole thing and really just come away with it thinking it was anti-feminist. Which, I mean, it is. I mean, in many ways it is, but it almost, almost by ineptness more than anything. It's more out of ineptitude than it is out of actually having an opinion because this movie's too dumb to actually have an opinion about the characters it's mostly just ineptitude showing her uh you know as a professional woman who's not smart enough to carry flats with her when she goes on a trip or when she just you know goes on a couple day vacation she doesn't have any kind of casual clothing or you know just uh, shows her talking to cows or she's single-minded about getting married it's the only thing in her life that she wants to do is just get married which is to me an anti-feminist idea for a character if that's the main motivation of your character i mean that's you know just kind of a a really terrible kind of single-mindedness of a character but nevertheless uh, i mean you can have a character who wants to get married but ha- but defining the character by the fact that she wants to get married is anti-feminist it is i'm sorry i'm not wrong about that that's an anti-feminist idea uh but but by this film though 
not, I mean, when you talk about this film, though, it's almost by accident. It's just by ineptitude. It's by the sheer stupidity of everybody who made this film that it comes about being anti-feminist on accident, really, without any actual intention. Because the, I don't think this movie intends anything but a series of the dumbest, most cliched gags that you can put on screen. Oh, I don't know where this came from. I thought I was okay. Like I talked about in the Greenberg episode, I used to be this kind of angry a lot. Like I had this this level of you know rage and bile aimed in all directions. <laughs> Mostly, I mean, mostly at myself, but a lot of times, like, just secretly, like, the people around me. Uh, and I thought I'd put that to bed, honestly. Not just because of Greenberg, but, like, just as getting older and more mature. I wasn't just because of that movie, although that movie was a wake-up call. But <laughs> I, I just figured I was a little bit more mature now. And I find now that I still have this capability of rage within me that it's kind of, I'm a little bit disappointed and it makes me hate this movie at, that much more for, for the way it's making me disappoint myself. Oh man, this has been another, this has been another revelatory episode, I guess. <laughs> I'm Sean Patrick and uh, whatever you do, just don't watch Leap Year.